Tennessee. It has been holding down the number one recruiting ranking uh, during the offseason for the 2018 signing class. Of course, the different dynamic this time around is that uh, from what I understand and gather, about 75 to 80 percent of the players across the country for the FBS schools and the Power Five uh, schools will sign in the early signing period, which culminates on December 20th, just a couple days away. Steve Hellwagon joins us from Bucknuts and 24-7 Sports. Uh, your thoughts about the Ohio State recruiting class? I know that there's been a couple of their top commits that have uh, wavered a little bit in recent days. Yeah, they go into signing day or this early period with 21 commitments, but I think at least one or two of them are kind of wavering. You've got Jaden Woodbay, uh, one of their outstanding uh, commitments, a safety from California, uh, St. John Bosco uh, Prep School out in Bellflower, California. He's a national top 30 prospect as a safety, and he's kind of up in the air, I think, on what he's going to do. And then you've also got the quarterback, uh, Emory Jones from Georgia, who's been taking some other visits. Uh, he visited USC this past weekend. Has, uh, or has I'm sorry, I'm getting my players confused. He visited Florida this past weekend. Florida State is also in on him. Alabama as well, maybe Georgia. So I think it's uh, – people ask me what what's the percentage he's going to sign with Ohio State. I think as of right now, less than 50%. And he's been committed for a long time but he's made no bones about the fact he wanted to take other visits. I think if he watched the Michigan game and saw the way Dwayne Haskins got in there and played in relief of uh, JT Barrett, and Haskins is just a redshirt freshman. He's got three up to three years remaining. Uh, you know, Perhaps that's given Emory Jones some pause about coming to Ohio State and watching Haskins play for a year or two. But, and again, you know, these – these high-end players don't they, – they look at the depth chart, but they're not going to be dissuaded entirely by it. So uh, I'm not sure what Emory Jones is thinking. Uh, he, he is, I believe, supposed to announce uh, his intention midday on Wednesday. So we'll keep an eye on those two. Ohio State is also after Jackson Carmen, an outstanding offensive lineman from Fairfield, Ohio, just outside Cincinnati. He is one of the nation's top 10 prospects overall in the 24-7 sports composite. He's the player who just visited USC this past weekend, and uh, we'll see all indications seem to be that Ohio State's the team to beat, but if they could land him, it'd be a tremendous coup. And, and this, this class is number one right now just imagine adding a top 10 player and hanging on to a wood bay and hanging on to emory jones and maybe adding another player or two down the line this this class has more top 100 players than just about uh any class i can recall from ohio state and really even top 50 players i mean they have scoured the country they got guys from 12 states uh they only have three or four guys from the state of ohio though which is uh, probably going to be an all-time record low number of scholarship signees from the state of Ohio for Ohio State. So that's kind of interesting that Urban Meyer truly is going nationwide with his recruiting. And I know Urban Meyer in the past has spoke to that. Of course, he doesn't want to answer the, the question head on, but keeping the Ohio high school football coach is happy and keeping a certain element of Ohio happy and keeping the best players there but not limiting himself because he wants a national program, national championships. That's uh, where he's aiming is, of course, to get in the elite. And if Ohio State or Ohio high school football continues to somewhat decline, it's still extremely strong, but not maybe in the top five to six states in the nation as it was 20 or 30 years ago then uh, it, it's going to be difficult for him to maintain that. I, I would think that he would want the top five or six players out of the state of Ohio and then go elsewhere for uh, the top-end talent as well. Yeah, if they get uh, Carmen, and another one is Tyreek Smith, a big-time defensive end. He's in the top 70 nationally from Cleveland Heights on the other end of the state. If they get those two players, they will have taken the top five players in Ohio this year, which – uh, is what you set out to do every year. What I would say about anybody who complains about, uh, you know, not enough Ohio talent, I I am a big believer that it is important to get kids who are invested in Ohio State to play at Ohio State. Uh, it feels like hired guns a lot of times when you get a Bosa out of Florida or a Zeke Elliott or a JT Barrett out of Texas. You know, I just 
throw names out there and, and and not to question their devotion because those people have all proven to be great Ohio State football players, very good ambassadors of the school and, and so on. So I'm not uh, belittling their contributions or anything, but there is concern. I, it is provincial, just like it is anywhere else. Uh, when you have rich high school football, I mean, there's 700 schools playing football in the state of Ohio and they do produce 150 Division One players every year. So the flip of that is those high school coaches, a lot of whom are Ohio State fans, would be crabbing if uh, if they lost this game to USC with uh, with or without Ohio guys. So uh, win games is what I think Urban Meyer has been charged with, and that's what he's going to do. And that Tyreek Smith sign uh, might be extremely important as well, as I'm understanding Ohio State a bit thin on the defensive front, which is surprising to hear because of obviously the, the immense – not just talent, but depth on the current roster, but with guys most likely leaving early for the NFL and just the graduation rate and leaving that uh, defensive end and them losing a few guys up front uh, in, in the um, in the recent news of guys committing elsewhere that uh, Tyreek Smith uh, suddenly has become, not that he's not a tremendous player because he is, and actually I interviewed him on here about uh, six months ago that he is an excellent player, but he's become a main target because of the attrition along the defensive front. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, they're losing two seniors, uh, Tyquan Lewis and Jalen Holmes, plus Sam Hubbard is more than likely. Uh, he got his degree in commencement exercises this past weekend. He is more than likely to uh, jump to the NFL. And so you had lose those three, but you do have uh, Nick Bosa back for his junior year. Also, Jonathan Cooper will return. Uh, there is one more uh, guy in this rotation. Oh, the freshman, Chase Young. He did a nice job this year. He was a big-time uh, recruit for 2017. And they're probably talking about moving Draymond Jones, who's been a defensive tackle, back out to end next year. I think that's a position he could play. He's got the athletic ability. Uh, they had a recruit by the name of Brenton Cox, a national top 100 guy, who had committed but then decommitted. I'm not sure if there's any chance that he would get back into the fold at the 11th hour, either this signing day or in February. Uh, that ship may have sailed, but uh, they have definitely made a uh, concerted effort uh, to get in on some of the top defensive linemen. And with Tyreek Smith uh, from uh, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, I know Penn State has been in on him. Uh, it may be a battle between those two and USC uh, for Ohio State uh, for uh, Smith and to add him this class. Steve Hellwagon joining us to talk Ohio State football. Uh, check out his work at 247 Sports and also Bucknuts. Steve, we appreciate the insight, the, the information, and you stopping by for the first time, and hopefully you'll be back uh, sometime soon. Yep, anytime, Mark. Love to do it.